How's it going everyone? I'm Sean and welcome back to the channel. If you want to learn how to use a hand plane to join two halves of a guitar body together and how to glue that up, then you've come to the right place because that is exactly what today's video is about. So grab yourself a nice hot cup of coffee, tea, whatever you want, get comfortable and enjoy. For this video, I have chosen a nice piece of sapili that I'm going to join. First things first, before I do anything else, I want to decide what way I'm going to join this. And thankfully this one is already marked for me. So line it up with the two faces together, like this, in whatever orientation you want. And I always draw a nice triangle right onto the surface usually using pencil, but this one has already been marked with Sharpie. So we're just going to go with that. Once you've decided on the layout of your body blank, just pop it into a vise. Either side, it doesn't matter which. Do pay attention to the direction of the grain. On a lot of woods, it's possible to read it simply by looking at the grain and deciding, for example, this is a good one, the grain tends to come up like this, this kind of a motion. Therefore, you can say that it's going that kind of diagonal. That is the way that the grain is going. Reading grain is a bit of an art form, and I find half the time you make an educated guess, and then using the hand plane will tell you if you've gotten it right or wrong. Sometimes planing against what we see as the grain direction is in fact the kind of better and more correct way to do it. Another way of checking to see which way the grain goes is simply Stroke the wood and you should feel the hairs, the fibers of the wood kind of rising to meet you in one direction. So this way I can feel the little fibers of the wood kind of trying to prick me. Whereas this way it feels an awful lot smoother. So therefore I'm going to mount this in the vise this way because I'm right handed and now I'm planing with the grain. The next choice I have to make is what plane to use. I prefer a number seven for this task. It's, well, it's, its length basically means that I can get a fabulous join pretty much every time. As for the main event, the actual planing here, I always think of this as a scooping motion, like this. So at the start of my cut, I'm putting all my pressure on the front of the plane. That's my scoop. As I go in and the middle, I'm bringing in my right hand and starting to push down. So I'm pushing down equally on both ends of the plane. As I come towards the last end, let's say when the front knob of this number seven comes off, I will have almost no pressure on my left hand on the front of the plane. And all of my pressure will be on my right hand. Sometimes I try and I even twist back so that I'm really driving the heel of the plane into the material. Another thing then people ask me all the time is, how do I hold that? How do, you, how do you hold the knob at the front of a plane? Easy answer is I don't. I put my thumb on the very front of the plane and that is what I'm using to do all of my pressure. I'm not doing this at all because it's very easy to rock the plane if you're holding the knob, whereas here it's a lot more difficult to do. So don't shoot yourself in the foot off the bat. Put your thumb on the casting of the plane and do it that way. One other check I often like to do at this stage, make sure that my blade is actually sitting square. So I will bring the plane all the way to one side. I get no cut there, all the way to the other side, no cut. Increase the depth of cut a tiny bit. Check again. Increase, check, I'm getting a little bit there. Almost a little bit there. Yeah, and my plane is still set evenly, but if you were getting a bite on one side, no bite on the other side, you would need to adjust your plane with the lateral adjuster back here. Anyway, back to the task at hand, how to take a pass. Remember all of my pressure, so my left hand at the moment, my right hand is a driving force, but it is not pressing down. It is forward motion only. You can even imagine that you're trying to twist the plane forward if you want it, if that helps. And then I will take my pass. As I get to the center about this area, my right hand is now starting to drive the plane down as well. 
And as I get near the end, I often like to take my left hand off and follow through. And what you get is a nice curl, a nice shaving, which is what we want. I've actually already planed this surface. So we will swap over now to the other side. Again, have a quick read of the grain, stroke it, figure out this is going this way. So I'll flip it around, pop it in the vise. And then again, thumb on the front. I'm gonna reduce the cut again on this one because it was a little bit heavy last time. I took nothing. You do not need to reduce the cut every time. I just noticed that this shaving was a little bit thick for me. So interestingly, this is not doing anything in this area. Then it starts on this side of the wood to take a little bit of a pass, which increases in width towards the end. That's telling me that there's some kind of a weird twist in this. And there, I hope you can see a bit better. Starts all on the left hand side, my left, towards the end, kind of centers itself. One other thing I want to do is check for square, simply by doing this, and I can see a small bit of gap under this side, so I need to adjust that. I'll check at usually three different places along the wood, and yeah, it is consistent along the whole, de of the whole length. So to adjust for this off square action, I'm going to move my thumb. And by doing that, I'm moving where the pressure point is. And that should allow me to write this off squareness. And hopefully you can see by the way the shaving is coming out only really on the right hand side. So what we're doing is we create a facet on there and then we come over and we smooth that whole thing off and straighten it off again. Once I feel I've kind of gotten one or two shavings off of this side that's higher, I'm gonna go until I can get one shaving that's full length and full width, and that should be pretty good. So I'm getting some nice shavings now. I'm getting quite happy with these full length, full width shavings. So I'm gonna move back. I now need to find out, once I have both of them done, basically where the gaps are. After planing both pieces, I need to start checking to find out where are the gaps and how am I gonna fix them? So I'm gonna get the two pieces, place them one on top of each other, in the orientation that they're going to be glued, and I'm looking for the gaps. In this particular case, there is a gap right here on this end, and there is a much smaller gap on this end. I will move one piece down, and the gap here has disappeared, and there is a gap that has appeared here. That tells me one big thing. It tells me that this one is pretty good, and tells me that this one has a bit of a belly in it. So I'm gonna flip, I'm gonna swap the pieces, and plane this one, try and get it more flat, and just keep checking and keep going until they look good when they're both together. To get rid of the belly on this first of all, I'm going to try and establish a hollow into, the, into this side of the blank. By doing that, I will start the cut there and essentially take out the center half. And then I will expand that out and that should give me a half decent hollow, which I can then plane flat. It is very, very difficult to take a hump out with full passes, but it's very easy to take a hollow out. So, again, bringing it to about there, I'm gonna just go and lift. So, take pass and lift. Pass and lift. It's that kind of feathering in and feathering out motion that is establishing this hollow. And then increase the size of the cut. And 
and this should have given me a half decent hollow and now I'll be able to take my full passes And the idea here is that we keep finding different gaps. So I've now found that this one is pretty good. When I move this, when I look at it again, there's still a gap there and a smaller gap here. When I move this down here, the gap actually travels to there, which means it's on the end of this one. So swap them back. And it's a case of keep chasing the gaps until they disappear. I know it's on the end of this one. I'm going to hollow this out, same as I did with that one. And um, yeah, that should be good. And that is it. That second piece took five passes and it's now a perfect join. Now I'll show you how to glue it up. The setup to glue this body is fairly simple. One big thing that I always use that I don't see many people do is spacer blocks. Bear with me. This seems really, really silly. These are just some blocks. These happen to be offcuts of Sapili and they just help to raise up the body. Position your two pieces. Obviously in the orientation you want to glue them in. And by having these spacer blocks it actually allows us to take a clamp like this, position it super, super easily. So I'm not actually going to glue up this body with actual glue uh, because I don't need to and I don't really want to. So, but I am going to go through the process and show you how it's done, I guess. Effectively, I would have this piece up, spread glue on it, only one layer is needed. It does not need a massive amount of glue for a join like this. Uh, just a decent film of glue on one side, perfectly enough. Put it down, you know, line it up. If you've got a triangle like this, then that's exactly how you want the body. Line it up like that, whatever. I get two clamps like these. Uh, any, whatever clamps you have on hand, I'm lucky I have these quite large bar style clamps. They are ideal. Uh, if you have sash clamps, anything like that will work fine. But you do need something wide enough to do the full body. I take two clamps on the bottom and I don't fully tighten them just yet. Just so that, just so they're engaged and they're now holding the body. They're not quite clamping it just yet. I'll then get some smaller clamps. I again have these beautiful F clamps to use. And I'm gonna put them on either end of the body directly onto the join. This seems a bit silly, a bit counterintuitive. And again, I'm not tightening them up massively. What they do, given that the two halves of the body are planed perfectly the same thickness. They're actually going to act as levelers, just so you don't get massive step, and then you've got a lot of you've got a lot of material to plane away afterwards. Especially if you don't have a large thickness sander or thickness planer, you're going to have, you're going to have to do that by hand, or with a router sled or something. By using these guys, these levelers, hopefully that is going to reduce that amount of work later on down the line. Lastly, one more, and this guy is going to go across the top of the body. This one, I am going to tighten up, followed up by the two lower ones. The reason I have one on top, two below, is simply because the way any of these clamps work, they don't squeeze evenly parallel. They will attempt to hinge the piece apart. It's not so much a problem on a thick guitar body, but if you're doing something thinner, say a carved top, it may lever that open and create a gap. 
having one on top is going to counteract that twist or that lever action from the two below and cancel everything out and should all be good. These guys don't really need to be tightened all that much. I give them a bit of a tighten, but not massive. Again, all they're doing is alignment and leveling. And that is it. If you have followed these steps, you've gotten a very good join with the hand plane, followed up by clamping cleverly, I guess, in this orientation, you are going to get a perfectly jointed invisible glue line guitar body. Easy as that. Of course, you can run these over a jointer, which these ones were beforehand, and nine times out of 10, that is gonna give you a good join, but I always go that extra little bit, get that joint perfect the way only a hand plane can do. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. Hit that like button, that subscribe button, bell notification for more tips and tricks and what have you. Thank you very much. See you all again soon.